You're listening to the Walt Weekly Podcast with our host, Walter Latham, and our co-host, Michelle Sweeney McCombs. Voices in society impacting the culture. All right, today we have Greg Coleman. Welcome, Greg. Appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Appreciate y'all having me here. Uh, my name is is Greg Coleman. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I, I lived in Brook in New York up until 2006, and then I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and now I'm a resident of Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, ah, yeah. man, nice. I've been yeah. there. Really nice. That's great. So yeah, it's, we're gonna it's, get it's, right it's, into you know a situation that you recently recovered from. Um, when and how did you find out that you had throat cancer? Well, I had, uh, I found out I had throat cancer uh, in April of 2019. And it was, it was, it's kind of weird, you know, the way those, those things took place. I, um, I was going to the doctor back in 2018 and she noticed uh, what she thought was um, an abnormality in my thyroid. And right. so she advised me, my primary care physician, uh, I'm a veteran, so this was at the, the VA. Okay. And she, she advised me to, to have somebody, that I need to have my, my thyroid checked out. Uh, she wanted me to go get some tests. And this was back in February of 2018. And um, I put it off and I put it off and I put it off and kind of, because it wasn't, she said it wasn't major, but she said it's something that, you know, it was an abnormality and she wanted to take a look at it. So right. I kept putting it off. Then um, I had um, an incident um, where I, I injured my throat and I went back to the, to the doctor and this was the next year. This was New Year's, of, right after New Year's in 2019. How did you injure your throat? If you don't mind me um, asking. Uh, just no. I was having some problems with my neck and back, and in the midst of those tests, um, they again came up with uh, you know we got, we see something you know an abnormality in your in your thyroid. You, you need to go get that checked. Okay. So I went about a month later and set up a CT scan, and the uh, test came back that they wanted me to go see a specialist about this. Uh, about the results of the CT scan. So okay. I, w- I went, now, now I'm living in Greensboro and um, kind of away from the VA. So I went to uh, an ear, nose and throat specialist here in Greensboro and he confirmed after he, he did the test and, and took a look at it, he confirmed that it could possibly be cancerous. So wow. right there in the office, he gave me, uh, he noticed some, some swelling on the left side of my neck. He took a look at it, uh, gave me a visual test there. And, and then uh, what every man fears, I think he pulled out this giant needle and wanted to take a sample right there. Oh my so goodness. Oh. He took the sample to see what the fluid is. Because uh-huh. uh, on his test, it looked like it was some fluid. So my lymph nodes right under my left ear. Uh, I'm sorry, under my right ear, was mm-hmm. swollen. And um, and I didn't feel any pain. There's no pain, no discomfort. So the only thing I'm going by is what they saw on the test. And right. he uh, went, sent that off. He said, you know, I don't see it. You know, once he took the fluid out, that, that swelling went down. But he said there was another location he could, couldn't get to with the needle that was also swollen. And he needs further tests for that. So he sent that fluid sample off. It came back non-cancerous. Okay. Wow. But the second test he sent me to, right up, right under my ear, my uh, lymph node up under my ear, came back as something that was cancerous. So, wow. Uh, it was about a, it was about a week, week and a half. Uh, I went back to see that same doctor. He confirmed that it was cancerous and uh, gave me my options. You know what, what, where I wanted to go from here, and that was it was it was sobering 
because oh, I can remember. oh man wow when you hear about people with cancer and and all kind of you know that's cancer ain't like a cold you know you can't you know take a couple of vitamins and keep it moving you know we think we're superman anyway and, right and that that's what that's the like the first time you face face to face with your own mortality like you can't run duck and dodge you can't take something you can't work out to get it better or Wow. This is something you've got to deal with. So it was right. a slap. It was a slap in the face. It was a wake up. Did right. you did you ever think uh, whether you would pursue it or not pursue it based on your family? Mm. Uh, you know, I was in a similar situation, you know, and it had to do with pan, my uh, pancreas. So mm. you know, I had to go through that uh, endoscopy type thing. So mm-hmm. they say, well, they got a spot, they got to take it out, you know, and analyze it to determine whether it was malignant or not. So mm-hmm. I had like a week's wait, after, you know, for them to do the, you know, the analysis. And mm-hmm. so I'm saying to myself, if I do have it, you know, with pancreatic cancer, there's no cure. You, you know, you, sooner or later. Right. You know. So mm-hmm. I, I had to think to myself, I mean, this is a heavy weight, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, do I, yeah. if I do have it, if they do confirm it, do I go for treatment mm. or not? Mm-hmm. Did right. you run into that type of situation? Because oh, I, I concluded that I owed it to my kids and my family to try. Right, mm-hmm. right. Okay. It's, it's, it was, you know, different scenario with me because right initially he explained it. It wasn't something that's usually uh, genetic or hereditary. This was an HPV HPV form of cancer, so oh, okay. it's a little different than something hereditary. So, I mean, yes, but you're still faced with how you're going to get it treated, and right, you know, right. right there by my side through the entire, you know, every doctor's visit was my wife April. Right. So, you know, it's really I'm bouncing it off to the one person I need to bounce it off. So we're getting immediate feedback. You right. know, like, what should I do? What should we do? And of course, you know, you, you know, I don't, if you know me, you know, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of all kind of, you know, natural medicine, uh, yeah. you know, what kind of, you know, what kind of root or herb could I take to make this go? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that North Carolina That's the first there. thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody in Africa you know, got something that'll treat this opposed to some, you know, pharmaceutical way of getting it done. Um, right. Just all kind of things went through my head. And, and you know, but then you got to assess. I, I had to, to put all that behind. And then that's when you got to rely on faith. And, and I think that was a major part in every decision I made in regards to this cancer treatment. You know, right. you mm-hmm. said you can say you got faith when when you ain't facing nothing. But the real test is going to be when you find out you got some adversity, you know, staring you right in the face. Now, do you have that same faith? And, you know, I had to get down on my knees and I had to pray. I'm like, you know, God, what do you want me to do next? You know, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a signal from you. And, you know, my wife is there to, to help me with that. So right. that, that was instrumental in what I thought was making the proper decision. And, you know, with all what came to me was trust this doctor and right. trust his course of action. And, yeah, you can still look it up and research, you know, what you want to, but mm-hmm. and then bounce that off the doctor if you need to. But but trust. Him. And, you know, he, he got you. So then I said, OK, all right. We, we're going to take this ride and <laughs> whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. And so you didn't feel like you needed a second opinion? Like, not, did you, not, not, not in that case, because mm-hmm. the, you know, I also had my primary care physician right. and, and her recommendation of this doctor and this doctor, even though he was associated with them, he isn't in that same circle. He's part of okay. another healthcare system. And mm-hmm. that's where I get a little, you know, tricky sometimes, like, you know, thinking they're all in cahoots in the same healthcare system. Right. But right. he's kind of independent of that. And, and you know, the feedback I got is with like, you know, this guy's no nonsense. And that was his whole approach to me. You know, he wasn't dressing anything up. He wasn't candying it up. He wasn't, right. you know, look, this is the situation. <laughs> right, right. This is what I suggest. 
And, you know, yeah. 80% of the time, this is the way it happens. 20% of right. the time, this is the way it happens. Because as soon as he looked at it, he gave me his gut. But he still went off of the test. He gave me his gut. He told me what he thought. And right. then okay. he told me okay. what the test said. And I'm like, okay. all right, okay. you know, I'm going okay. with this guy. Like, like if my cousin Vinny, when the guy had the stuttering order, uh, uh, yes. stuttering lawyer, <laughs> yeah, 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 said, nah, yeah, I yeah. want that guy. And that's what I said right. to myself. Nah, I want this guy. So right, that's good. <laughs> how long how long did it take you to get your results? Yeah, it was about a week and a half, and that was oh, the he longest, had some time. He had ten days. Longest week and a half, man. I yeah, swear, you know. Yeah, I can't imagine all kind of felt. things go through your mind. And then, yeah, then you got to you know, go back for consultation, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like right? at the end when you get the results, then you got to you got you and your wife had to go back so yep. he can tell you the news, right? Exactly. Like uh, you know, you're going, you're going to parole hearing. Uh, no, yeah. I think that, no, I think that. Well, where you going to the chair? Are you going to get out? Yeah, yeah. More likely. Right. That's more likely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. that is true. So, you know, um, I know you guys fairly well, and um, you had just like actually one year anniversary, right? It was. It was maybe. It was ten months after we got married. Right. So really, How, a, little, little, that, a little less than that. A little less, a little than, less than, that. than that, though, right? Yeah, yeah it was a little yeah, less than that. Yeah. How has that taken a toll on your marriage and your wife with the support she's given you? I know she has retired, you know, from her working, but, you know, I know you have your mother-in-law. You know, how did that affect you guys personally? Was it just another thing to add? You didn't think about it and you just kept it moving and did what you had to do? You know, how, how did that... The family. It was it was it was an adjustment. It was an adjustment. It was definitely, but it, but I can't say it was a strain on our marriage. It right. was, you know, especially when looking back on it now. I mean, April was an absolute champion through this thing. There's wow. no way I would have got through this like I got through it without her. It's just right. I can't say it any plainer. You know, right. can't say it any 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 plainer because. That's great. There was no wavering in her. Right. All right. We going to go through this. I got you and whatever you need, you know, we, we going to be all right. That's good. So, you know, I That's could be great. as rah rah as I want, but right. you know, when you get that from, we get that from your partner, you know, from, from yeah, your help, no. then, then that's the confirmation and you know, and she proved right. it, you know, all throughout my, my treatment that year, cause it wasn't pretty. Right. Well, right. Of course. Yeah. All, of course man. not. Of course. Yeah. Not. Definitely. Definitely. Man, Took every his... step of the way, you know, she's right there at every appointment. At you know, mm -hmm. I mean, just and and that that helps, you know, because that's a confirmation that you made the right decision to go through with this. Right. You know, that's a constant mm -hmm. confirmation. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, it, it 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 helped. It was it was it was a, it's a godsend. On the day, uh, on, the, on the day that you, mm -hmm. on the day that you got the news, prior to going mm -hmm. into that office when you were sitting in the waiting room, all right, and mm -hmm. the doctor's going to give you uh, your, his diagnosis on whether it's malignant and whatever, you know, you got to take all these treatments and this and that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was, what was going through your mind? I'm a, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I I don't know if you know, you know, I was in the military. You know, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, growing up, I'm, you know, high school football player, play a little semi-pro. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. my mentality. Sports is my mentality. I coached right after I stopped playing. So, you know, I'm right. I'm, and, and that's, I, you go back to what you relied on. And I went back to, you know, that, you know, the old sports analogies, like I felt like Rocky, like I'm getting ready to go into the ring. So I got to get myself pumped up. And I'm gonna get ready oh, for this, great. no matter what he say. Yeah, we, you know we're gonna do this and blah blah blah. So that and 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 it wasn't allowed. It was you know me telling myself that internally, right, right, know, right, because right. I had to pump myself up and like, okay, if he says we got cancer, we knocking this out. And yeah, you gotta fight. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we gonna fight this. We are gonna knock this out. And then there's the spiritual side of you too that you know you're gonna be all right. You know, I'm gonna give you whatever you That's, need. I'm, right. I'm gonna push you through this. It's, you know, even if it hurts, we're going to push through this. We're going to get what we need. So all of that combined. And then yeah. the fact that, you know, pushing me into the ring is my wife. She's standing there right next to me. I got <laughs> you. Hand on my shoulder. So that's you know, great. So, you know, when it came time to walk in that door and get that decision, 
you know, when he told me what, you know, that it was cancerous, then, okay, I already had to have myself geared up, pumped up and ready for the game. Not right. having any clue just how rough the game was going to be. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, That's right. Okay, I see. Yeah, I you see. don't know until you have to start doing it. Yeah. No. That's no. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I know yeah. when I was waiting outside the office, uh, along with my wife, you know, and, you know, we all, you know, close and she's holding my hand, but I wasn't afraid. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, as soon as I walked in the office and sat down, before the doctor could say anything, I said, okay, how long I got? I was just like one of you guys wow. on TV, but internally, yeah. I was scared as hell. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? And then he said, nah, you know, it was, it, 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 it was non-malignant. It wasn't malignant. And it was like the, the, the weight of the world off your shoulders, right? I right. got mad. I got mad. <laughs> Why? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm going through all this and you know, didn't find nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so you should be happy. <laughs> you, you should be happy. That's something, right? But you wow. know what? It's yeah. true because I had a situation with my kidneys and, you know, they were cold. Oh, you yeah. got to go on dialysis. Like, what? Yeah, just oh, I can't be here. Is you know, like I'm like, I thought I had a urinary tract infection or something. It's like, no, your kidneys, you gotta do immediate. And I'm like, I don't think so. You know, I panicked, I called my husband, I was crying, he was like, Calm down. You know, he's the calmer one. I'm psychotic <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Greg, you know me, I'll be going off before yeah, I even yeah, know, yeah. you know. So yeah. and then I calmed down, went to the specialist, and he was like, uh, no, you don't, you just need medicine. <laughs> oh, so, good, give me <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I wanted to go back to the the, the urgent care and knock her out for just, you know <laughs> taking you through that, right? Right. Yeah, because it is a yeah. lot of anxiety that comes with that. It's a I mean, lot of anxiety. Yeah. Because again, like I said, we live that our mortality. You right. know that 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 what do they say? You know, sometimes we're gonna think of us. You know, it's gonna happen, but it's gonna mm-hmm. happen to somebody else. It ain't gonna happen. Right. To me. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, you know, that's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm there yeah. for somebody else if it happens to them, but right. I'm dealing with it. And then if they tell you that is, you know, oh, it's okay. No, it wasn't that. Now, you know, you got yes. yourself all pumped up for nothing. Then right, she, right, right. Yeah. Like you got me all scared, and I'm yeah. like, oh god, you know, I gotta go through this. I know people that have been on it. It's not good. <laughs> I'm a healthy person. I eat right. I take care of myself. Why me? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know that's something else. You know, again, I like to say I'm a healthy person and I take care of myself. But right. you know, now yeah. I start reconsidering when they tell you, you know, you know what the cancer is and and how you could have possibly, you know, picked it up. You start to right. second guess everything you did in your life. Everything oh, yeah. you did in your life, you retrace oh, yeah. your steps, and you want to blame yourself for right. the decisions that you made that you might not have made. That right. and all in all might not have had anything to do with why you got the cancer, but you still second guessing it. Anyway. You second guessing, definitely. You're going to yeah. second guess it anyway. Yeah. So that you go through that. And, and, and so that's you were never what, you were never a smoker. Never, never a smoker. No. How about never a drinker? A never Heavy a big drinker. drinker. You know, you know, you drink social to keep up with the crowd for a little while. Right. And this, right. Social other, drinking. But, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that that's that had stopped a long time ago. Right. right? Um, right. You know, right. never thinking that, you know, yeah. And that's that's one of the, the things that you, you fool yourself to thinking that you're OK, too, to, because just because you don't do that, you're going to be all right. And, right. You know, right. But but I, I will say, though, the fact that I didn't do that helped in my recovery. Oh, right. that's great. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, good story, Greg. I mean, I, we never discussed the whole thing. I know yeah. when you got that, you know, how tell us how when you recovered from it, how how did you feel? What you what what went through your head? What was the process of going there to get these results, these final results because I know you had to go through a few changes. Yeah, because you know, and I'm going to tell you the truth, I'm still not to the point where I'm totally you can say actually and, and I got to be, you know, totally mm-hmm. honest. I have had my final mm-hmm. appointment today and forgot about it. Are you kidding me? Wow. Uh, believe it or not, we had, you know, so much else going on. I forgot about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, the tests are already in. It's really just the doctor saying what the test results from. So, you know, okay. I can 
reschedule them and say, but you never, I've never gotten to the point. I haven't gotten to the point yet where you say I'm recovered. Yes. Okay. My belief is I've recovered, but you didn't get that official word yet. But just like, you know, the whole treatment period, recovery is a long process. It's not just one, you know, it's just not one milestone that you reach and say I'm recovered. So, you know, the, the whole treatment period was one of the most excruciating, humbling, wow. you know, bring you right. to your knees experiences I've ever had. And like I said, you know, yeah, basic training, football camp, you know, whatever, any kind of physical, you know, mm-hmm. thing. I done had, you know, uh, rotator cuff surgery three times, broke my fingers, broke my nose. Uh, bit of none of that. None of that compares to, to, this. to this cancer treatment, none of that. Wow. And wow. I'm, un, you know, I'm not thinking that. You know, I'm thinking that, you know, okay, you know, I know it's tough, but this was this was life changing. This was game changing. And you know, wow. you almost come down to, you know, being a little baby crying on your mother's lap. That's how you know, right. painful this right. thing was. Right. Right. So, okay. and and my going into it was that you know, okay. My it took eight weeks to go through that whole treatment period. And as soon as I right. ring that bell, my my last chemotherapy or radiation treatment, that it's over. Uh-uh. Right. That's where it's it not. started. That's wow. where it started. But but again, and, and I give them this, I tell I, I'm glad they didn't tell me that in the beginning, because I might not have went through it if I knew what I had waiting for me down the line. Oh so, man. You know, yes. they tell you yes. about the treatment. But they don't tell they don't you. They'll tell you after problem. the treatment. Wow. Oh my goodness. That was the adjustment. Because now the damage is done. The chemo to the done. side effects, right? Oh, yes. Side yeah. effects. Okay. The chemo has has absolutely destroyed your your throat. You know, yeah. in my area it was my throat that the chemo right. the radiation has destroyed your skin, your throat. You right. can't swallow. You can't everything is painful. You can't right. sleep. Um, right. breathing right. sometimes. Is wow. is you know drinking some water is some of them like you drink you're swallowing razors, and oh man, it's it, it, it's for an extended period of time. It took time wow. for all that, all those muscles to recover, and you got to go through therapy mm. to retrain the muscles, just right. to do simple things like swallow. Mm. And wow, you know, that whole process was painful, and mm-hmm. and that's why. You don't you don't get to a point where you say I've recovered because right. every every yeah. day is a different step. It's in a that different recovery. step. Like, OK, you know, wow, I was able to drink apple juice today. Right. <laughs> you right. know, right. Yeah. Things that we I was able to. With. Yeah. Oh, today I had some chicken soup and, you know, those are things you took for granted. Now, right. now, yeah. now yeah. you like, appreciate yeah. those things. Like right? Chicken soup. Wow. I can remember, you know, like eight weeks in after the recovery period started. I ate a hot dog for the first time, you know, from oh. solid food. I'm like, man, I'm on the way now, you know. Yeah, right. You know, was, you can eat a hot dog. That gives you indigestion right. anyway. But then, and Michelle, <laughs> yeah, yes, you yes. know, one of the things I enjoy more than anything else is food. Yes, you know, that's, that's that's part of my life, you know. And, that's and part of your life. You, you can't eat nothing. The yeah, stuff you that's like, tough. Oh my goodness, that is you tough. Know, you that going is tough. You go into barbecues and stuff like that. Everybody's eating. Hey, man, come on, come over here and get a plate. Uh, you got any apple juice? Right. <laughs> wow. So, you know, that that whole process was an adjustment. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, yeah. And you know, laying down, you take for granted being able to sleep. I had to sleep, you know, propped right. up on a pillow for six months. You know, and wow. You know, like you say, so what impact does it have on the marriage? You know, we still newlyweds, man, and I can't, I can't yeah. even sleep normally in the bed. You know, so well, okay, you know, that's a little issue mm-hmm. right there. <laughs> yeah, definitely, it definitely hurts it. You know, that's, a, but, that's an issue right there. But you know, again, thank God, man, you know, I can't even, I can't even through. tell you, I can't even tell you just how valuable family and friends work through that process. Right. I mean, right. it was just an outpouring of love, support. Constantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't say I know people some have some experience. You know, you hear people say, well, you really know who your friends are when you get in a situation like that. Well, mm-hmm. I knew who my friends were and, and, and none of them disappointed me when I, when, right. when I really needed it the most. They did. Family, right. friends, you know, right. even people that I couldn't you know, think of. Hey, Greg, we just, you know, want you to know, right. man, we know it's tough, man. We love you and, and you know, and get through it. 
you know. Right. And that, and that means a lot, man. It does. That it does. It makes it, you know, having that support is definitely a big thing. Y'all definitely. Just unbelievable, man. I'm so tried. your your um your treatment was primarily outpatient or it was, it was some inpatient, it, some out. It was all it was all outpatient. It was all outpatient. Okay. okay. And that's something, oh, man, okay. that was a blessing too, you know. It all the people at this clinic here in, in Greensboro, the Cone Health Clinic, I mean that whole system, you know, I heard horror stories, you know, with you know, people going through treatment and insensitivity. Man, these right. people were unbelievable. The people in the parking lot that parked your car were just the friendliest. They made from the second you'd pull up to go get your daily treatments and your chemo and stuff like that, they just bent over backwards to make it as effortless and nice. And the pleasant Beautiful. as they could be, man, and that that helped. You know, I look forward to going in. I might not look forward to getting it done, but I look forward to going in there every day. Excellent. Right, Excellent. right. So that, that's good. That just that's made, good. It, made it cool. You know, but right. now you right. know the recovery part of it. You know, I you get to a point where you think you you arrived that I'm you know right. I'm cool I'm all right, but there's always little reminders. You know that you know I tried to take a vitamin mm-hmm. you know a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, oh yeah, I can, you know, I eat spoonfuls of food that's bigger than this. I took that vitamin and my throat's still mm. not ready to process that and and, oh, and, wow. choked, and choked on it. You know, now I gotta right. I get, gotta get right. it out of my throat because my throat's still not ready to take that. It's hard to oh, heal. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, you know, it takes a period of time, but yeah. Know. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it'll take some time, you know. Yeah. But thank yeah. God, you know, you got through the yeah. first part. Yeah, you know, yeah, without thank a doubt. God. And, and, Without you know, a doubt. All right. So when you go back lot. now, mm-hmm. uh, Greg, when you go back now, you mm-hmm. said you had to go back. There's you know something still pending. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what is? It? Yeah. Go ahead. Could you explain? Elaborate so a little like bit a, more. Um, what they do constantly is monthly. They still monitor. So after one of the things the chemo does, the chemo has a, a, a effect on your immune system. It weakens. Okay your immune system. So it, it knocks down your white blood cell count, um, mm-hmm. hemoglobin. It it weakens your immune system. Mm-hmm. So now you're you're pretty much exposed, you know, things like common stuff that you might run into is going to affect you more than somebody else with a, right. with a strong, you know, with a regular immune system. So you got to be aware. And so just when I get to the point Every month they take a blood test and they check my levels. And you know right. the doctor says, well, okay, yeah, this is getting a little better. These numbers are getting a little better, but we still want you to be aware. You know, watch who you're right, around, right, groups right. of people, wash your hands. Now, this was before the COVID outbreak. Right, right. The whole game changed, you know, March 17th. I go into my appointment, you know, get my levels checked. This is, and, and they're like, look, you know, you're, you're getting better, but your immune system's still compromised. And now oh, with this COVID, wow. ep- COVID epidemic, I need you to stay in the house. Period. Right. Point right. right. You know, everybody else might debate whether we want to put a mask on and whether we want to go here, whether we want to practice social distancing. You don't have that option. This is what you need to do. Right. Because, right. Because my, my levels weren't back yet. You're at so high that, risk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, last month they test, you know, or two weeks ago they tested my levels again, and they're still not where they were getting better. But for the first time since the treatment ended, they dropped again slightly. Okay. And the doctor that I was supposed to see today follows up on the on the uh, the cancer mm-hmm. part of it, not okay. just my my blood levels, but the you know how my throat's recovered, how. Uh, you know, swallowing and things of that nature and everything, right. all any other organ that was directly related to the treatment. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and, right. you know, he gives me an update on that. And that's what I would have found out today. Like, what is his suggestion for me moving forward in right. this, during this pandemic? Right, so, right. Uh, again, you know, I, I know folks and even my wife thinks I'm a little junky sometimes when I, you know, Who's that coming, you know, to the house? And, I'm the same way. What's going on? Yeah, I remember you, know, you, you told me a you situation know. where you had visitors and you told them yeah, to leave. Yeah. Like, they, you know, you got to be that. considerate. Yeah. Have, you are at risk. risk. Yeah, because they don't consider that. And, you know, halfway I understand it. But then the other side of it was they were just, you know, 
bucking the system all together. And, you know, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. that y'all made your decision. Now I got to make mine. Okay. Right. I'll see, y'all, I'll see y'all next time. Right. Got, got right. Exactly. You exactly. Know, so. You know, it could affect you in a way where, yeah. you know, yeah. you're risking your life and then they're mm-hmm. moving on, you know. So, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, people but that are not also, work sick, you know, you got to be careful yeah, with that. Absolutely. And and it and it's going to take more. It, you know, it takes less for this to knock me down than it will for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? They might go and be fine. And I'm, you know, I'm the one now I'm getting symptoms for, you know, for mm-hmm. something completely mm-hmm. different. When my body still hasn't recovered from the first thing, right? Like it's supposed to, right? right. And, and, and I'm going to tell you the truth. The other side of it is me, you know. Mm-hmm. Just human mm-hmm. nature. We think that mm-hmm. we've gotten to that recovery point. So I'm not doing my therapy exercises like I should. You know, I right. get up and say, "No, nah, I'm good. I'm all right. I can do this. I can do that." And uh, right, yeah. While, while you might be able to do it, you still shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And you know, so I got a, you know, I needed a wake up call too, and, and so <laughs> this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, yeah, you have to be careful. You know, moving mm-hmm. forward, I think you know this is just a life changing experience for you. That you know, you'll be conscious of what you can eat, how you live. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. physically taking care of yourself. You know, mm-hmm. um, I know alkaline water. I knew someone that had cancer. And um, they never did treatments. They went holistic. But, mm-hmm. you know, they, they bathed in alcohol, alkaline water. Mm-hmm. They drank it. They did everything with it. And it gave them longevity. You know, I'll tell, you, but tell you, you the truth, Shell, somebody else. Now, I knew this at the beginning of the treatment out of me looking it up. Mm-hmm. And uh, April's mother, who had just battled uh, cancer, she drinks wow. it every day. But, I'm, right. you know, I'm like, well, no, I'll be all right without it. Just drinking, you know, regular water. Somebody right. said it, you know, mentioned it again to me yesterday. I mean, last mm-hmm. week. And now mm-hmm. you're the third person. And, you know, right. that that's confirmation that right. you know, I need to, I need to get on that program. Right. Right. Another friend of ours, uh, mutual friend, Evelyn, she has a machine in her mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. and it's con- it's connected to her, her system. Her system. You know? Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's what, you yeah. know, it's, it's expensive. It's but, expensive. But anything that's healthy for you is expensive. I, I keep telling people this. That might be expensive, but the medical bills, if you don't do it, is going to be even it's more It's going to be even more expensive. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I agree. I agree. So good. You answered my third question then with the COVID, <laughs> you know, how it's impacting you and your health and your life yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's it. You know, it knocked it back a little, but you know how I feel about that. We needed to be slowed down a little bit anyway. And I'm sure we I did. Do. You know, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, we yeah. had some casualties, but I think it was a cleansing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, definitely. people. It was a purge. It was a purge. It was a purge. Okay. That's right, right. I, I, I think so. You know, and hopefully, you know, with the summer coming and they're slowly opening the system up, people will be conscious and more respectful of people's space. So, we'll yeah. see. But, you know, if you have pre-existing like yourself, you really have to be careful. You know, yeah. you just can't yeah. go back yeah. to normal. You know, you really yeah, can't. I would have, really. you know, I would have, I would have liked to have been at a, you know, a few few protests or something like that. But, you know, mm-hmm. like the first thing I'm thinking is, you know, man, the people are kind of close to each other. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to think twice, you know, you had, you had, you had high risk. I mean, a lot of people took risks mm-hmm. just doing it, you know, that are healthy or there's some people out there that were in wheelchairs. They still took a chance. So yeah, yeah, no, that's true. And you know, listen, I'm, good for them. I'm, you know? I'm not telling them they shouldn't I'm, have because nope. you know this is this I'm, was important. I'm, I believe yeah. in what they're doing, but you yeah, know, man, um, definitely, definitely. But I'll cheer them on through the TV. So yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I I got one question though. I may have yeah. asked it earlier, but just to make mm-hmm. sure. The, uh, does cancer run in your family? Has there anybody else ever had throat cancer in your family? No, no, not at all. And I mean, okay. you know, and that's really started to be digging and asking. You know, right. Nobody had ever heard of anybody having, you know, throat cancer. It has to start okay. somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, it's, it, what it is, is that HPV right. type of cancer is something you get, you know, could get, it could be by contact or it could just be, you know, genetically whatever. And, you know, the first thing I'm thinking of, to be totally transparent, you know, I wasn't always as sexually judicious as I should have been in the past. And 
I know Michelle oh, yeah. might get a, mm. a kick out of that, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know I'm what not going to say I'm, anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I, was, I was a little, you know, a little looser than I am now. Yeah, he was, he was loose. <laughs> I can confirm. Mm. So, no, you know, honestly, that's the first thing I'm thinking of. So right. you also go to, all right, all right, if I got it, you know, could I have possibly have given it? But, mm. you know, the doctor assured, you know, sit, told me, sat me down, and it really doesn't work like that, like something, right. like a, right. you know, sexually transmitted disease or anything like right. that. It's, it's, it's different, but it can mm. be, you know, something you come wow. to. So, you know, wow. all of those things start to flash back. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you say, "Oh my goodness, man! What you know? I knew I should have." Uh, right, know. like when you said earlier, yeah. you started thinking about a lot of things. I'm like, "Okay, he got a long yeah. history here." Hey, so, hey, hey! I'm not gonna say, <laughs> but you know, okay, you we're here. Me, you know. We are here. We're gonna edit no, man, that no, out. No, no, but honestly, you know, that's all. You know, that's all in the past. That's who who we are. So right. you but it makes you think about, about stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it you makes know? you think. There's gonna you know? be a ramification for everything at one time. For everything. You know yeah, I mean? so definitely, definitely. Yeah. But thank God, you know. So I will say you recover. You are here talking to us. You're gonna get good yep. news. Yep. So yep. Yep. And I'm you know, one of our key men on the panelists. You want to believe that our man, key I, persons. You know, your, your contributions yeah, are we, great. This is vital, you. vital form of information, man. So I, you know, I definitely we all it. have to. Yeah, definitely. We all have to support each other. You know, when you do your podcast, we'll be there for you too. So definitely, I'm just grateful. It's gonna be, it's gonna be most mostly sports, but you know. Oh well, then I'll be. No, I, listen, I'll be. I'll be the female voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look at the questions and all the guests coming yeah, in and then yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my part, good. like I've been doing. Yeah. We're, so this this one we're gonna get your husband on there with us. Oh man, please do. <laughs> <laughs> He'll stop work for that one. I, I know that's right. He definitely right. stopped work for that one. So let me ask my final question, uh, mm-hmm. Greg. Mm-hmm. What advice can you give to anyone that had that just ignore warning, warning signs and are afraid to really get a checkup? You know, when when it it really comes down to you know us. Number one, you know the the stigma we have on our on us as mm-hmm. people that right. you know we don't. I know you know black men are labeled as, you know, really not following up on our, our medical care, disregarding right. it, you know. And I know, you know, a lot of that was generational. Our parents, you know, our mm-hmm. grandparents might not have trusted doctors and and, and medical uh, right. staff for, for various reasons. Could have been financial and could have been, you know, a lot of times misdiagnosis yeah. diagnosis and malpractice, you know, in right. a lot of cases. Right. Mm-hmm. But, right. you know, we have to. Uh, and, and again, you know, I guess, you know, this is combined with faith, you know, technically, technologically, so many things have changed over the last 20, 30 years. And right. We've got to put some kind of trust in, you know, in the medical system. And right. you know, even if it's just everything else is 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 preemptive, you know, proactive, staying on top of what we eat. I mean, right. it sounds trivial, but it's important. You know, especially nowadays, because we don't know where stuff is coming from. That's right. We don't know the origin of so much food, so many foods we eat, how it's been scientifically modified and, and messed over and, you know, all for the profit yes. that these right. companies do. So we got to be diligent about, you know, what we put in our bodies, how we maintain mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. doing that. You know, we might take our car to get a, you know, religiously to get 5,000 miles, you know, oil change and checkup. But we won't do it to ourselves. We right. That's it, right. You know, the basic stuff we got to do. So, you know, you'd be able to look back at your history and say there is an abnormality. You can see something and say, well, this wasn't there six months ago. This wasn't there a year ago. You got to have that track record. And that's what they did right. with me. They look back and say, you know, August two thousand, uh, February 2017, this wasn't there. But it's there this year. And, you know, 2018. And now it's even bigger in 2019. We got it. We got to take care of this. And that's the right. only way we get it done. And, you know, I know there are obstacles when it comes to, you know, the corrupt, you know, for profit medical systems and stuff like that. Right. But, you know, hey, we put money. We got to prioritize where we're going to put the, the money we do get. And our health needs to be at the top of the list. That's right. You know, Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. you know, we once totally we prioritize agree. that and, and, and love ourselves. 
If we love yes. ourselves and maintain ourselves, and, and if we don't do it for us, we got to do it for the people that we love. That's right. right. That's right. And my right. wife just got married. What if I just said the heck with it, and then I was gone a year later? You know, so mm. you know that 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 ain't even fair to her. Right. You have to consider her too. You know, my my right. my family, my friends. You know, and, with yeah. the relationships mm -hmm. we build. If, if you ain't gonna do it for yourself, do it for them. Yeah, especially at early stage of a marriage, you know, um, you guys built such a good bond with each other that, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of relationships, you know, this is for the younger people. We're older, so we have more uh, <laughs> discipline in relationships. We have yeah, more patience yeah. now. Yeah. You know, a younger couple, the wife probably would have just left. Like, oh, I'm not dealing with this. We just got married, you know, yeah, but for better or for worse, you know. I, I got a I got a model that, that needs to go back to the factory. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like every car, you got to yeah, you, know, you got to yeah, have a checkup. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. change the oil and the tires and the engine. That's and right. The whole transmission. That's right. And the human She's body is no different. Yeah, <laughs> no different. She, she might feel like they sold her a lemon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, right. You got you got to get that check up. You got yeah, to have that. You have to get that check all up. changed, and, and, and that's just that we like this. I know one thing. I don't know have you, whether you attained that age yet, but when mm -hmm. I hit sixty, mm -hmm. that was a year that things started happening. That's mm -hmm. the year that I had that uh, endoscopy for okay. the right. pancreas. You know, I had uh, pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. That that's what I had. That's what sent me to the doctor, but. Mm -hmm. So everything, yeah, the pancreatitis was what started the whole thing. And it's and, a blessing uh, that, that wasn't more serious, man. Yeah, but that's yeah, what I'm I saying. They went in and they looked for, they saw a spot, you mm. know, they saw a spot, they they did a biopsy type thing. And and that's when the doctor said, oh, it's not, it's, you know, it wasn't malignant. And I'm asking him, oh, what? He, wow. he should be happy. But how, yeah, but how anyway. has that changed? How has that changed your life as far as you know your nutrition and your outlook on what you eat and, and how you how you take care right. of yourself? Has it? Uh, it definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get mm -hmm. in your sixties, things just happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and, and, and reflects how you lived your life. You mm -hmm. know, because I was yeah. one of those you know guys that you know, drank and and partied and mm -hmm. ate what mm -hmm. I wanted to eat, didn't mm -hmm. worry about yeah. it. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, those things catch up with you because I, but one thing I do do is I, I preach to, to my kids, mm -hmm. you know, what you do today, let's say you're in your 30s, going to affect you in your 40s, and what you do in your 40s is going to affect you in your sick, in your 50s. I wish mm -hmm. I would have That's just that the way it is. I was 30. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I tell uh, them that, you know? So, that's true. I mean, well, it's I, true, I, Walter, because yeah. right now I get, I get pains in my knees and... I was, you know, I used to be very active with martial arts and stuff. I got abused a lot physically from doing that. And, right. you know, it's, it's a, you know, not even 60. It happens in the 40s, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, the body starts to change. Everything is changing. I'm like, hey, where did that come from? You know, right. on and my you know, thigh. Like, what is that? I'm not used to seeing different things. So, you, you know, what's yeah. funny about it? It's funny about it is that it's not only happening to us. But we see it happening in our circle of friends. Like, yes. Oh, I got like, now there's a crew of us, you know, at church that are all, done, you know, going through the cancer, you know, in one wow. way, shape or form, you know, really? so, and, and we're all around the same age. Oh, wow. You know, so that mortality doesn't just sit in in us. We see it in the people close to us. Right. Everybody. And, everybody. and all of us say, just like you said, Walter, man, you know. I wish I would have ate a little different when I was 30 or, you know. <laughs> right. I didn't drink that much. You yeah, know, yeah, that yeah, I should, yeah. I should have yeah. stayed off that Crown Royal back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Johnny Walker Black was not. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah but, That's uh, so funny. You know, your lifestyle as you're young, you definitely have to watch. You definitely have to watch yeah, yeah. what you do. But it, it will impact you. It, now, you may not yeah. see it in, in 10 years, but... <laughs> It'll come back oh, in real circle. Like, back. What yeah. the hell? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and your body can't about. handle it. You're like, God, Lee, you, it takes longer to heal for anything. <laughs> oh yeah. And you know, one of the one of the funniest things about this whole thing, and, and not so much funny, the day I got the cancer diagnosis, I was two thirty. I wow, still you were big. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, you yeah, know, and, and, and boy don't, over there. And don't give me it, it you know, I, I fooled myself. Because, yeah, you know, I looked like I had a little belly and a little weight, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like fat and out of shape. 
Okay. You know, I'll, 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 I'll like you if you don't mind I'm, me asking. I'm five six, so two thirty on a oh, uh, yeah, five that, six that's body. Kinda, yeah, yeah that's, that's a lot. That's portly. I'm a yeah, yeah. I'm hundred and sixty five pounds today. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. That's, that's more than fifty yeah. pounds. That, no, that's right. shoot, that's sixty yeah, something pounds. That's hundred. Yeah, you know, that's sixty something pounds, and you know, just blow me away. That was weight I absolutely did not need. Right, you feel different, right? Oh man, you definitely. When man. you don't have that weight, man, yeah, yep. it wears you down. You know, um, you man. don't realize it. It makes you sluggish. You're slower. You know, so April was about uh, thirty pounds of that back on, but I don't know if that's really. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. If you feel good with that weight, you can no, carry it. No. Feel much know, you know, the motto is everything Just is moderation. Up. Everything in moderation. Yeah. And then, You're exactly right. That's Mark. it. That, that exactly is it. Right. Yep. Yeah. Wow. You know, like me, wow. I had to stop drinking Pepsi. You know, you know, you get that that tight. Ooh, 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 Pepsi. Yeah. Oh, that's my the real. God. Oh my God, that's a gut killer. I thought I was what that meant. Once it, my sugar level started going up and I had to monitor it. Whoa. And, and Pepsi? Take two, yeah. I had to stop drinking soda, period. And That's I went for wild. years without drinking Pepsi for three mm. years. Mm. Until the other day, mm. with this, mm. with this lock, you know, the quarantine and everything, we were at KFC. You know, we go there every mm. Saturday. Mm. And they say, you know, you get a free drink. So mm. wow. I said, what do I told my wife, I said, oh, I'm going to try a Pepsi. You know, we didn't. Look, what the hell? It's COVID yeah. out there, you know, this and that. Yeah. You know, and I I I I took the Pepsi and I took her Pepsi. Mm-hmm. We, didn't want to, we all we drink drink water in the house. That's all we <laughs> right. All right. Wow. So every every Saturday when we go to KFC, I drink a Pepsi. Wow. That's wow. it. Wow. That, that's after like four years. Yeah, I started, wow. Started, started, yeah, moderation. Pepsi's a lot. Quarantine. Moderation. Yeah. Woo! Pepsi is like acid. <laughs> really? That's yeah, favorite. I couldn't drink it. Yeah, that's I April's drink favorite it. drink. My wife's favorite drink. And my mother really? That's, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, no she, way! It's like this house cannot not have a Pepsi in it. It's like yeah, really. So we, we, we fighting that fight still. I ain't win that. Wow! One. <laughs> wow! I had that Pepsi. No way. That's crazy. I mean, yeah. Believe it or not, my mother, when, when she was getting ready to pass on and she was in mm-hmm. the, uh, mm-hmm. rehabilitation. Anyway, mm-hmm. she, she said, Booby, that's my nickname, Booby. Uh, could you go get, <laughs> go get me some chicken? And then, you know, I said, okay, mom, what do you, you want? What do you want? The thigh, leg, bro? Yeah, and some french fries. I said, okay. And don't forget mm-hmm. that Pepsi. <laughs> that's yeah. It. yeah. I mean, you know, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, it was she was wow. in the eighties, so you know, yeah. She was yeah. But yeah. her last yeah. good meal, she had that Pepsi. Mm. Had to mm. have that Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's how my yeah. wife's family is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I had that Pepsi, man. Hey, I, I brought. I came in the house with some Coke one day, and I, they almost threw it at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big difference. It's definitely a big it's difference. A big I can't, I can tell in a second. Yeah, I can't swallow Pepsi. It just hurts my throat going down. Really? Like it, it puts a big lump on my chest. Like <laughs> oh, that's different. Yeah, it's it's very painful for me to drink Pepsi. Period. Even yeah, Coke sometimes, yeah. but I only get those Coke or Pepsi when I need when I used to get stickers on the car from sanitation. Mm-hmm. Right. And you pour it on it, they come off. So that right there told me <laughs> I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to drink this crap. If it's taking wow. that off, what is it doing to my insides? Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's true. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, once a week, Michelle. You know, I try to, you know, tell. Oh me. yeah, once a week. Once my mother used to drink Pepsi every day. I did smoke too. a cigarette. Yeah, yeah, I did. That too. Yeah. One of the that's things right. that pushed me off it for the most part is, you know, they say, you know, so many people medical uh, and just, you know, around that cancer, mm-hmm. you know, prevention mm-hmm. industry that sugar is the enemy, is is the friend of cancer. So one of your right. biggest, biggest enemies in recovering it is too much sugar. Right. So, you know, that cancer gets up and it feeds on that cancerous material. So uh, okay. eliminate the sugar, you help yourself out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, I'm going to die soon because this is a Kool-Aid house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
we cannot live without Kool Aid Man Live. We're old school. We had some Kool Aid Man, I mean, especially great. Red Kool Aid, yeah, yeah. Lao makes the gourmet Kool Aid, so everybody's like, "You sure that's Kool Aid?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's Kool Aid." Oh, <laughs> you put a little lemon in it, lemon lime. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you name it, he hook it up, and I'm like, "What?" It, I'm not allowed to make it because I don't make it right. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't make any beverages in here. Like, no. <laughs> oh, my God. It's either too much sugar or not enough sugar. So, well, you know, the doctor yeah, said, "Hey, you, you, you're type two. I said, "Okay." Right. So I, right. I don't use sugar. So you avoid right, it all together. Right. Yeah, I use Splenda. You know, I shouldn't even. He said, "Don't even use that." But I use a little yeah. Splenda. I gotta have a little. Splenda is so gross. Yeah. No, but no, I'm used um, to it. I mean, to me, I, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. when you get used to it, you don't have a choice. Yeah, you have to get used to it. You know, I can't but, imagine. Um, you know, I haven't had straight up sugar, with the exception of the Pepsi. In, in in years, I just don't do it. Wow, wow. No. Yeah, I mean, I don't drink soda anymore. I'll keep ginger ale for when I get an upset stomach. But we drink a lot of fruit juices, apple juice, mm -hmm. cranberry juice, stuff like that. Yeah. And then if we have events, you know, barbecues and stuff, I'll buy sodas. But we don't drink soda. I'm so used to not drinking it that it doesn't do well with me at all. I replace my my addiction to soda t to those sparkling waters like Pellegrino and stuff like that. Oh yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Flavored waters and stuff. All right. Okay, and that That's you know right. when I when I want that bubbly taste, I get it from there, and that kind of right. uh, stops me from drinking the soda. But you know, unfortunately, sometimes if the soda's in the house, yeah, I ain't got no sparkling yeah. water. I might grab one. You know, but, right, right. For the most part, I kicked it. I kicked the habit. Right. All right. right. Excellent. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. That's. Great. Hey, Greg, I got one final question for you. Uh, okay. What would you recommend? And I think we already spoke to a mm -hmm. lot of it. Uh, to young people uh, in terms of health and what you've been through, what can you share uh, that you know think of, that you think of benefit the younger a, people? A large part of it is the self awareness. You know, I know we think we're we're unbreakable when we're young, and you know that we can pretty much stand up to anything. But you know, getting into the the first of all, learning from the wisdom of older folks. You know, that's one of the things we downplay, you know, societally, you know, listen, just like, you know, you passed down the wisdom, you know, to, to, to me just now about when it started to hit into you and what you started to do to change that. Right. You know, um, it's the same way, you know, older folks are willing to share their wisdom with younger folks. Number one, you got to right. be open. Number two, you got to listen and, and you want to you want to learn from from the mistakes of others. And, right. you know, li listen to your people, listen to folks, and then love yourself enough to take care of yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Love right. yourself. Okay. You know, no matter yeah, what yeah. society says, love yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. That's first. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. If you don't love Appreciate yourself, that, you can't love anybody else. Yes. Yeah. Not at all. And no one will love you if you don't love yourself. Absolutely. It starts and ends there. Yes. Great. Right. Uh, fantastic show, guys. I really Yeah, it. it's amazing. Thank you, Greg. We're glad, Thank glad you were on. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you being a guest host as well on our panel. Thank you. Um, man. Just we look love... forward to more and we look forward to your sports one. I can't wait for you to do it. You yeah, know, I'm, get, I'm getting it together. That's gonna that's gonna be fire. <laughs> <laughs> get it together. So all right. So we look forward. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. We'll get back, you know, reschedule your appointment. All right, yeah, for sure. You know, we'll yeah, don't miss, that. don't miss, don't miss it. You've been too far. Yeah, matter of fact, I think I got that text message since I've been on here. So here, I'll okay. Set it up. Well, you yeah. need to answer that. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> we'll take care of your business, man. All take right, care, bro. Bro. All right, Love you. Have a good day. okay, guys. Have, have a good bye. one. All right, thank you. Okay, bye bye, bye, -bye now. Thank you for joining the Walt Weekly. We could be found at Facebook, the Walt Weekly Podcast, Twitter, at Walt Weekly. Instagram, The Walt Weekly, and www.thewaltweekly.podbean.com. Please like, follow, and share.